welcome to the June 8th Hemp Show powered by CanTrade. My name is Mark Stelly. I'm the CEO of CanTrade and the host of the Hemp Show. Last up on the Hemp Show today, we have Kent Brown, the president and content developer of Witnessing History. Ken is a former constitutional lawyer and author of several books on American history and has produced 11 documentary films on American history for public television broadcast. He is currently working with the hemp industry to produce a film on the history of hemp. Thank you for joining us today, Kent, and welcome to The Hemp Show. Thank you. It's fun to be here. Excellent. <laughs> so I have to say, starting things off, that mm -hmm. although I have a broad understanding of the history of cannabis, I do not have much, if any, of, a, of an understanding of the history of hemp. And I'm extremely excited today to not only learn about what the plan is with um, the history of hemp, you know, the documentary that you're, you're working on here, but also just to learn some things that I've, I have no idea about. So yeah. I would let you take it away, take it wherever you like. <laughs> well, let me, let me just say for, for purposes of what we're doing, the production of this film, uh, hemp has an enormous uh, uh, history with the development, founding and development of this country, of America. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I mean, it, it, it was seen in Plymouth with the Pilgrims. It was grown in Jamestown. And in fact, the, the legislature governing Jamestown actually made it a requirement that you plant hemp. And hemp became important for a whole lot of reasons, particularly the hemp fiber. Uh, you could make clothes with it. Uh, you could make hats with it. You could um, you could make uh, bed coverings for it. You could make floor coverings with it. Um, but more importantly, to the British Empire, which of course is responsible for most of the early settlers here, it became essential for the British Navy. In that, from hemp, you can create rope. It is a very stiff and durable rope. And that rope made out of hemp became what was used for all the rigging, the halyards, all the roping, including the, the, the ladders they used to climb up the, um, the masts of those vessels. It also was used for the sails. So, <clears throat> The British were very interested in the United States, uh, the, the, what became the United States, the, the, the colonies, uh, developing large crops of hemp because they could use them. And it became particularly important in the early 19th century because of the Napoleonic Wars where the Balkans, where uh, England received most of its hemp, Russia and the Balkans were shut down due to Napoleon. So they turned to, the United States. And um, the United States began to be one of the great leaders, including, frankly, Kentucky, where I live. Uh, Kentucky became the largest producer of hemp in the Western world. And um, uh, it began to be used in the uh, uh, United States Navy. To give you an idea, our favorite ship uh, out of the War of 1812, the Constitution, or old Ironsides, there, there was on the old Ironsides uh, 85 tons of hemp used in the halyards, rigging, and sails of that vessel. And that was only one of the vessels used by the United States Navy during the War of 1812. Hemp, because of its maritime importance, became important to the early founding fathers of this country, George Washington was a razor grower of hemp. Thomas Jefferson was, James Madison was. John Adams of Massachusetts was one of the foremost proponents of hemp. And in fact, on his way to the Second Continental Congress, he even wrote out a list of things he wanted the Second Continental Congress to do in the summer of 1776. One is vote on independence and number two, foster the growth of hemp in the colonies. So, I mean, it shows you how important hemp was in the beginning. And 
what we want to do in this film and, and, and witnessing history education foundation is a 501c3 we rely entirely on donations to do this kind of work. But we make films that we uh, broadcast we have broadcast on um, public television cable television also on multiple streaming channels, including our own, which right now has 2 million views. Um, we have uh, seven films up there. We've done 11 films altogether. All of them have won awards and they've all been on various aspects of American history. I believe uh, and I have from, for a long time that we should do a film on the history of hemp in America. Uh, one, because of its close association with all the founders of this country, with the founding of the country. And so we're, we have set about uh, uh, proposing a film, the title, the working title of which would be called The Seed and Fiber of Wealth. And for those who would like to go on the website, if you go, if you type in Seed and Fiber of Wealth Hemp Film or witnessinghistory.org hemp film, you can come up with the entire prospectus for the film. It gives you the history of hemp. It gives you how the film will look. It gives you the budget we have for the film, all of that, and then tells you exactly what type of funding, if you give it, if you give to this film, uh, we are looking for, and uh, the various uh, different levels of giving uh, for the film. And of course, it's all tax deductible. These films are not inexpensive. This one cost approximately $240,000 to make, but this is a film that will be broadcast widely on public television. All of our films are broadcast on public television. We just finished a film on Abraham Lincoln in Illinois, and that film uh, was picked up by the NETA, the National Educational Telecommunications Association of PBS, and they, uh, they signaled it to every one of the 247 PBS network affiliates in North America. And so they, that film has been seen by them. Uh, right now, it, uh, it, to show its popularity in Illinois alone, and it's the film on Lincoln in Illinois, there are 11 PBS affiliates. And of those 11, uh, the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum is sponsoring each broadcast of that film to seven of the 11 PBS affiliates in Illinois. So uh, these films are very popular and um, they get wide circulation. And we think a film on the history of hemp in America would be um, something that the viewing public should see. It also elevates the whole idea of, of hemp to another level, which I think is important in this world. And um, so that's basically the, the foundation of what we do and what we're proposing. Well, I have to say that this is all killer. I love it. Uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the first, one of the questions I was gonna have later on, which you, you basically covered already, which was how can we help? And um, you know, my takeaway from that is that ultimately the film needs to get funded. Funded. So, Right. Um, one hundred percent. Not only you know, not only are we going to help, but we're going to send out um, everything relating to helping to get this film funded to the entire Cantrade network, to all the businesses, because it's the industry as a whole that not only are rebuilding what we once had, right, and right. but also right. trying to um, you know get rid of that zeitgeist, get rid of that the the misinformation that's yes. fed to us for years and years. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so definitely excited about that. And I have to say, love the PBS station. Love, I'm, I'm such a nerd with all the, uh, with all the uh, like nature educational mm -hmm. films. I haven't watched the, I haven't watched your history films, but I'm thousand percent going to give that, um, start giving those a watch. I can, this. I can tell you, if you go on the Witnessing History website, which is witnessinghistory.org, you can see a, a, a button that says watch films. All you have to do is sign up, cost nothing, and you can watch all the films. You can also watch them on the uh, Witnessing History Education Foundation YouTube channel. And you type in Witnessing History Education Foundation YouTube, and you can watch them all. Our whole method, me, reason for existence is to make films on American history that are high quality and tell just the facts. We have no, there's no politics in anything we do. 
just tell the facts in an entertaining way uh, and then make them as available to the public as we can make them. So the public doesn't have to pay any money to see them. It could just go right on the, the uh, YouTube channel or on a PBS channel and watch them. Right, right. And, then, and I mean, a perfect example is the conversation um, if you were if you were on prior to this that I was having with Colas and, mm -hmm. and Dana, I mean, putting together training programs, ultimately watching something like the history of hemp and, and just everything having to do with that, that should almost be like in the curriculum for the training process for every business. Yeah. Just to yeah. understand what people have had to battle and why yes. it is the way it is right now and why it took the 2018 farm yeah. bill to ultimately start to turn that around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I've always felt uh, all along in, in watching this, this uh, the, the, the saga of hemp trying to come back is that uh, the greatest uh, uh, ally it has is its story. And it has a magnificent story uh, connected with all aspects of American history. And um, uh, that story is so powerful that no matter what anybody might think about hemp, you'd have to conclude this is valuable to this country because it always has been. Right. Even in World War II, parachutes. And one of the parachute facilities that made it out, made parachutes out of hemp was here in Lexington. So, um, it has always been a factor in America's crises and it's in, in its development. Right, right. And um, so a few few questions for you associated sure. with this, all of which I'm sure I, I'm sure we'd have uh, no doubt learning about when this when this film does get uh, produced and ultimately published. The you know, it's always said that the U.S. Constitution was wrote written on um, written on hemp paper. Is that is that correct? N no, no? I, I would say no, okay. nor the Declaration of Independence has often been said to have been uh, written on uh, on hemp. Okay. Those were written on vellum, and um, but there is talk, and I think it's probably accurate, that some drafts of those were written on hemp paper because uh, Benjamin Franklin used hemp paper. Okay. Uh, so there's a, a strong indication that hemp was there, was played a role in the drafts, but the final ones were on vellum. Sure, sure. Now, I just had to ask that question because like I said, <laughs> I've heard yeah. that, you know, being in the hemp space, I've heard that so many times. Yeah. Um, now, I do, I do have a question here, and we don't have to dive into this too deeply because like I said, this is all going to be, the purpose of this is ultimately to, um, you know, help get this this film produced so we can all right. benefit from this Correct. knowledge. Uh, now, can you speak a bit on, on what happened and why hemp got criminalized? I mean, my understanding is the paper industry with DuPont and, and all basically uh, colluding to then, and then everything having to do with the criminalization of cannabis slash marijuana and so on. Um, and then trying to, uh, restrict the rights of minorities in certain ways. Um, so can you speak to that a bit on, on how that happened? It, I would say, <clears throat> to make it simple, um, there were two reasons why it um, uh, became criminalized. One was hemp is a cannabis plant. Um, and, and it became lumped in with marijuana. And... Um, that in the 1930s, 40s um, was um, <clears throat> thought to be um, something that the government ought to intervene and stop. Uh, behind that though, were people who were interested in manufacturing uh, goods that saw hemp as a rival. It's also uh, a, a, a rival that is uh, totally renewable. Um, you can always grow more. And um, their synthetics and so forth were far more expensive. And uh, consequently, the only way to, to correct it in their eyes was to get rid of hemp. And the idea that it should be criminalized was a good one be for them because, um, you know, it is a cannabis plant. And so those two things, I think, simply speaking, were the culprits. Uh, greed. 
uh, competition and um, what the plan is. And of course, one of the things we would do in this film is that, the, and I've talked about this with the Department of Agriculture at the University of Kentucky, the first thing I would do would have a professor of, of, um, uh, at the University of Kentucky in the Ag Department discuss the difference between hemp and all the rest right off the bat. Just get it out of the way. And now, talking, now start talking about the history of hemp. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, we've thought about, the, thought about that um, over time and um, <clears throat> we can take care of that. Excellent. One of the uh, one of the trick questions I'll tend to ask people sometimes is uh, what's the difference between cannabis and hemp? So and, <laughs> I'd let the be, experts do a lot of the talking on some of that. <laughs> well, you'd be you'd be surprised what type of answers I get. Um, I'll bet. But <laughs> so I'll bet. Uh, yeah. So ultimately, um, this this is great. Now, one one last question before hopping off here. As far as the, you said, you would have a University of Kentucky. Um, yep. you know, expert look in yep. or basically explain the difference was between right. say cannabis and hemp at the start of the film right. is the research for the, for the, for the film mostly completed or is this something where yes. as, okay. So yes, the research for it is largely done. And in fact, we've been working on the script. We're looking at approximately a 90 minute film. Um, the last portion of the film will be dedicated to things that are happening today because I think people ought to be aware of what's happening today. It's very exciting to me. Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the organizations that has contributed to it is Hemp Black out of uh, North Carolina. And it is amazing the type of uh, material those people have been able to produce uh, out of hemp. And um, so we plan to devote some segment of this film to bringing people up to date. The rest of it is all history, and um, um, we are in, we're, we're actually working on the script. It's going to be ultimately about a 91-page script. That's a half page. The other half of the page are, are the illustrations that are going in it, or the footage. And um, but we're 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 attuned to this. Having done 11 of these things over the years, um, we have a pretty good system for putting them together. And yes, so we're working on it right now. Excellent. Excellent. Now that just made me think of another question. Uh, I know we've got to wrap things up here in a minute, but a few things. One sure. thousand percent. I'd love to have you on one of our deep dive conversations because, uh, you know, there's a lot of history here and okay. I'm just super curious. So I would love to learn more, but uh, I'll be happy to. Happy my, to. So Sarah's going to send Sarah send that link over um, later <laughs> today or tomorrow. But one of the last questions I had here is it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more comical, but uh is this in the process of the film, is this going to be a narrated film or is this going to be professionals speaking um, about the specifics? Um, Our, the reason I ask is you've got a great voice. You don't happen to be the one that's going to be narrating this. I am the narrator. You are the narrator. I <laughs> I've it. narrated every one of them. <laughs> yes. Well, I had, that's what I had to add. I, I wasn't sure. I mean, I haven't seen the other films, so I'm going to go watch those, but you have a killer voice. So I was just wondering if you were going to be the one narrating that. Yeah, yeah, I, I do the narrating of it, um, and I do all. I write the scripts, and I select all the imagery for them. And um, but we have a whole staff of people who are editors and sound designers and all those people. But um, yes, I will. One thing we will not have, save for a, a professor uh, of uh, agriculture, to just tell the difference is that we don't like to use talking heads. We don't need someone to come in and tell their opinion about anything. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is present just the story. It's exciting enough all by itself. Yeah, that's that's ultimately why it's rough watching news these days. It's, it's it is. 24 hours of talking heads. Yeah. Same, yeah. same reason I can't watch sports channels. I can't either. If, if the game is on, if, if the game is on, it's all right. But if the game is not on, it's just talking heads for yeah. Yeah. 18 hours a day. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I totally agree with you. So this was, this was excellent. We're definitely gonna get you on the deep dive and okay. we're going to get out what we can, um, you know, anything you provide us. So uh, we'll get that out to the can trade network. We'll get that out as many businesses as we can. Cause this is something that needs to be funded through, through the hemp industry as yeah. a whole, because it'll be so much benefit. 
uh, finally, again, uh, the seed and fiber of wealth hemp film will get you to the site. Uh, witnessinghistory.org hemp film will get you to the site. Uh, to look at the films, it's witnessinghistory.org or Witnessing History Education Foundation YouTube. And you can also, for those who are really interesting, by gosh, you can call me. 859-455-9330 uh, is the phone number at Witnessing History. And I'm here to answer anybody's question. I love it. I love it. And I'm going to take that number down next time I'm in a in a little <laughs> argument with one of my with one of my hemp buddies. I'm going to be like, hey, we got to call Kent. Kent's going <laughs> to We don't need Google. I would be thrilled Kent. to death. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. This is cool. Um, so all of those links, everything you just mentioned, uh, we're going to go ahead and post that in the YouTube show notes and the podcast Good. notes. So for anybody, I look forward to working with you guys. It's great. Just yeah, this is this was really cool. This is really fun. And like I said, I'm I'm excited to have you on the deep dive. Dive. Thank you. So if you're interested in connecting with Kent and Witness History, we will be posting the information in the webinar chat, also in the Cantrade feed and the podcast and YouTube show notes. Once again, thank you for joining us, Kent, and I look My forward pleasure. to you again. Thank soon. you.